We propagate new apple trees through a process called grafting. Apple seeds take a long time to produce fruit-bearing trees, and the seeds do not produce trees that look like their parents. So, if I have a golden russet apple, and I scoop out the seeds and then plant those seeds, it might be 10 years before I see an apple, and that apple probably won't look or taste anything like its golden russet parent. Grafting allows us to create new trees that produce fruit that is identical to its parent. Bench grafting, or bare root grafting, takes place in late winter, and the process begins with collecting scion wood, collecting pieces of the tree you'd like to copy. The scion will grow up to be the fruit-producing part of the tree. You can, of course, order scion wood, or you can harvest your own by snipping one-year-old sticks from the tree you'd like to copy. The sticks should be about one quarter inch thick and have several buds. Harvest scion wood before the buds have broken and store them in cool, damp conditions until you're ready to graft. You'll also need to source rootstock, which serves as the rooted base of the tree. The rootstock determines how tall the tree will grow, how long it will live, and when it will begin bearing fruit. You can create your own rootstock from seedlings, but I'd recommend purchasing from a nursery to find rootstock that fits your particular situation. All of the trees in the Heritage Orchard have been grafted using the whip and tongue bench grafting technique. The most important tool to have is a very sharp knife. A set of pruners can be helpful. You'll also need a thick rubber band and something to seal the graft. We use parafilm, but there are also many grafting waxes one could use. When you're ready to graft, find a zion and rootstock that are about equal in thickness. A flat, slanting cut is made at the base of the scion. Make sure that the buds are pointing up, away from the newly cut surface. A matching cut is made on the rootstock. It is important that the bright green layers of inner bark, the cambium, matches up with the cambium of the scion. It may take a bit of trimming, but the cambium layers must line up and the slanting cuts must be flat. When you're satisfied with your alignment, you must create tongues to strengthen the graft union. Cut vertically into the diagonal ends of both the scion wood and the rootstock, starting just above the heartwood to create a tongue on both pieces. These tongues should interlock when the cut planes are pushed together. When viewed from the side, the interlocking cuts will produce a Z-shaped pattern. Wind a broken rubber band around the interlocking graft section and tie it off to hold the rootstock and zion together. Parafilm, or another graft sealing product, is used to protect the graft from drying out. You should also seal the top of the zion. The trees need to be kept cool and moist while callous tissues form in the graft union. Pack the trees in damp sphagnum moss, sawdust, or shredded newspaper and seal them in a plastic bag. Store them between 36 and 42 degrees Fahrenheit for two to four weeks. For the first year, it is a good idea to plant your young trees where you can keep your close eye on them. Give them an area that is free from weeds, in full sun, and protected from vermin and string trimmers. Check the trees often and remove any growth shoots coming out of the rootstock. By the end of the first year, your tree should have grown anywhere from two to six feet tall and have few, if any, side branches. Protect young trees from rodent and deer damage over the winter with paper tree wrap and a six inch by 36 inch tube of hardware cloth set at least an inch or two in the soil.